Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we're finally going to be taking a look at Unify's new zone based firewall after a lot of people have been asking me to do a video on it. So, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get into my Unify network application. We're going to look at the old rules and then we're going to convert it over to the zone based firewall. So, let's get started. Now we're in my Unify network application. The first thing we'll take a look at is my different networks. So we have my default network, which is gonna hold all of my secure things or my ubiquity devices. We have my camera network. That's just all my ubiquity cameras. We have my guest network, and then we have IOT. So the IOT network will have my cell phone on it. It's gonna have my home assistant. It would have anything IOT related like Chromecast as well. For Wi-Fi networks, I just have three. I have my camera network, Dolores, and the guest network. For the camera network, I don't have anything on it right now, but we will be putting some cameras in the backyard in the summer that are Wi-Fi. So let's head over to our security. Now, these are the firewall rules that most people are going to be used to if you haven't upgraded to the new zone based firewall. If you want to upgrade, which we're going to do soon, we need to click on this button here. But you can see that we have all internet, LAN, guest, internet v6, LAN v6, and guest v6. And when we create a new firewall rule, let's just go into it, we have a bunch of different types. We have LAN in, LAN local, and then we also have LAN out. Same for the internet, guest, and then all our IPv6. These are the basic rules that I currently have on my UDM Pro. And after this video, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, and I'll probably do a follow-up firewall video. But we have allow established and related. Then we have allow default to all of my VLANs. And you can see over here that there's the RFC 1918, which I created under the profile. So if we hover over the I icon, you could see that it has all of the RFC 1918 IP addresses. The next firewall rule is to block inner VLAN routing. So my IoT network can't hit my default, it can't hit my guest, or it can't hit my cameras and vice versa. If we scroll down a little bit, you could see block camera to gateways. So we don't want the camera network to be able to get to 192.168.10.1 and be able to log into our UDM or try to log into it. So that's all blocked. And you can see that we have six different rules for that under the LAN local. Within our zone based firewall, this is made a lot easier. We could block all the gateways out just with one rule. At the beginning when I was using zone based firewalls, I didn't really like it. I thought it was a bit more complex. But after a few weeks of testing it out, I could now say that it's a lot easier than this current firewall that we're looking at. Before we go ahead and upgrade to the new zone based firewall, let's take a look at our network object. So we have block camera to gateway. So this has all of the gateway IPs except the cameras. The same goes for guest IOT. We also have a separate network object for our camera gateway, our guest gateway and IOT. So the camera gateway has our camera IP address in it. So 192. 168.50.1. I also have HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH created. So port 80, 443, and 22. And the last one is this RFC 1918 group. The top network objects we're not going to need within our new zone based firewall. It has simplified it quite a bit. So now I'm going to upgrade to the zone based firewall. We're going to look at the rules that it pushed over from old to new, and then I'm going to completely delete all of the firewall rules and we're going to start from scratch. So let's go ahead, click on security and then click to upgrade. Now it's going to bring you this prompt that says that it simplifies the firewall management and I'm going to press on upgrade and this should take a backup for us. We can see at the top that the zone based firewall migration was completed and an automatic backup was created. So if you want to revert, all you need to do is click there and then load the backup in. But now we have a bunch of different things which you're probably not used to seeing. So we have these zones and then if we scroll down below, we have the zone matrix. So let me explain the zones. The internal zone is any network that we create. So when we go into our networks and we create a VLAN, they're gonna fall by default into our internal zone. For the external zone, this is the internet traffic on the WAN or could be connections with a third party VPN. Our gateway zone handles the traffic that is going to the unified gateway, which could be DHCP, DNS, HTTP traffic, or SSH. The VPN zone is for our remote users. So this would include a WireGuard VPN, OpenVPN, or identity and site to site. The hotspot is for our Wi-Fi hotspots and the DMZ is for outside access that requires public facing resources like a web server. Now let's take a look at how the rules pushed over from the old firewall set to the new zone based firewall. We could see in our zone matrix that we have 79 different policies. And if we click on that, 
we could scroll down and then look at everything that was created. We could tell that there was multiple that were created. So allow default to all VLANs that was created four different times and for the zones internal, hotspot, external, and our VPN. The same goes for our block inner VLAN routing. So there's a bunch of rules that we probably don't need and we could get rid of in here. Now looking at the side, this is where the source is coming from. And then if we move to the right, all of this is the destination. So if we go from the internal to the internal, we could see the rules that we created. So allow established and related and allow default to all VLANs. At the bottom, it always allows all of our traffic. Now what I'm gonna do next, even though these firewall rules are working for me, we're gonna recreate it all. We're gonna create a trusted network an untrusted network, and then we're gonna put rules around that. So I'm gonna delete these rules and we'll start from scratch. All of our firewall rules have been deleted and we have our internal zone. I'm just gonna use that as my trusted zone. We're gonna create a zone which is called untrusted. Within this zone, I'm gonna select the networks of camera, guest, and IoT and press save. Once we press add entry, a pop-up comes up saying, please proceed with caution and view the policies applied to this zone to ensure traffic from devices is not accidentally blocked. We're gonna press proceed and then we could see that this zone was created. So untrusted camera, guest and IOT are within it. Within our zone matrix, we now have untrusted. And if we go over to internal, there is a rule created for us. And this is called block all traffic, which is in both directions. So this pretty much blocks inner VLAN routing for us. We can't get to my default. We can't get over to the cameras. It depends on the network that we're sitting on. If I bring up a command prompt, type in IP config, you would see that I'm on the IoT network because the third octet is 107. Now, since I'm in the IoT network, I'm gonna try to ping this camera, which I shouldn't be able to. So ping 192.168.50.165, and you could see that it's not going through. But if I look at my clients, I could still ping things within my own subnet. So we have this Chromecast right here and we're gonna try to ping that. So it's at 192.168.107.243 and we're able to get to it. So this essentially does our inner VLAN blocking for us. Since our untrusted zone says block all, this is going in both directions right now. So if I brought up a command prompt and this computer is sitting on my default now and I hit the up arrow and we're trying to hit that Chromecast again, we're not gonna be able to do it. And this, you may want it to be like that. So your default or your trusted can't get to any of the untrusted networks. But if you wanna allow the default to get everywhere, we need to create a new policy. So we'll click on our internal under the allow all and create policy. The name is gonna be allow default to untrusted. The source zone is gonna be our internal. We're gonna let any port and our action is gonna to be to allow. There is a checkbox that says allow auto return traffic, creates a built-in policy for the opposite zone pair to automatically allow the return traffic. If disabled, return traffic must be manually allowed. So our destination zone, what that's gonna be is our untrusted network. And then we're gonna add the policy. Once I do this, we should be able to ping that Chromecast. Looking at the zones for the source of internal and then the destination of untrusted, if we view that policy, we could see allow default to untrusted. Bringing up a command prompt, this computer again is in the default, but if we try to ping something that is on my IoT network, it should go through. And you could see that is going through if this is what you like. It's all up to you on how you create your policies. The basic rules are created. Our trusted network could get everywhere, untrusted could only go out to the internet and see its own network but they could still get to our gateway ips if i open up a new tab and i type in 192.168.10.1 it's bringing us to the udm interface if i do it again going towards 50.1 which is the camera gateway we could hit the login page which we don't want so the first thing that we need to do we need to click down on profiles from profiles, I'm gonna click on network objects. Within network objects, I'm gonna create new, and this is gonna be HTTP, HTTPS, and then that it's gonna be SSH. It's gonna be a port of 80, 443, and 22. With the network object created, we need to go back to security, scroll down to our zone matrix, and we need to create a new policy under our untrusted. The name is gonna be block untrusted to UDM login. The source is gonna be our untrusted network. The action will be to block. This time the destination is gonna be our gateway. Under there, the port is gonna be an object, which is gonna be the HTTP 
HTTPS and SSH, and we're gonna add this policy in. Before we would have to create two firewall rules per network, now it's just done under this one policy and it really does simplify it. So if we go back up to my browser, we're gonna give it a second so that it writes to our UDM and we type in another gateway IP and press enter, you could see that it's just timing out. The same thing would go for if we tried to do an SSH session towards it. So 192.168.107.1, and I'm gonna press open. And that is also timing out, so we won't be able to get in there. I do have SSH enabled on my UDM. It is not enabled by default. Let's now create some rules for our VPN. You could see I have a WireGuard server currently there. And since we have allow all on our internal, this VPN could get to anywhere on our internal, but it can't get to our untrusted because of the block all traffic rule. You'd see here on my phone, which is connected to the WireGuard VPN, I'm able to ping 192.168.10.133, and that's going towards my UNAS. You, it can go through and we could hit any IP. So any of my switches or my access points, we don't want that to happen. We want it to block and then maybe let the WireGuard clients get to my NAS for file sharing. So under our VPN, we're gonna create a policy calling block VPN to trusted network. The source is gonna be our VPN, our action is gonna be the block, and then the destination is gonna be internal, which only has my default network, and we're gonna add the policy. Now, after a few minutes, we should see this ping timing out, and that won't allow us to get to our UNAS. You'd see the request timing out to our UNAS, and that means we can't get anywhere on that trusted network, but we do want the clients to be able to get to the NAS, so we need to create another policy. So we'll click on Create Policy, and we'll say allow VPN to UNAS. The source is gonna be the VPN, the action will be to allow, and the destination is gonna be internal, but only an IP. And the IP is 192.168.10.133, and we're gonna add that policy. Just like our old firewall, we need to reorder this so that the allow is above the block. So we'll click reorder, and then we're gonna just drag and drop, and then we're gonna press done. Once I press done, we should be able to hit the UNAS once again. As you can see on my phone, some of the ping requests are going through and in a second, they will all start going through like they are right now. So our VPN clients could only get to the NAS for file sharing, but they can't get anywhere else. And that's gonna be it for this initial video on the zone based firewall. And it is a lot easier to manage. If we create a new network, we could put it in whatever zone we want and the firewall rules are already there. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see in the next zone-based firewall video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.